In Korean, it's 사랑해요. 사랑해요. 응교. 응교. 사랑해요. 응교. Johnny Case. He is in the midst of training camp. He is in the he's in the pits of training camp with the Korean zombie <laughs> in South Korea, and uh, he's you know he's uh we're fortunate enough for him to join us, you know, and uh, we got a couple questions. Johnny, first of all, you know, how are you doing and, and how is life treating you in uh, South Korea? I mean, I'm thriving, brother. It's, it's awesome here. You know, Zombie and his wife are, are taking, like, taking care of us like we're kings, you know. So um, it's been awesome. You know, Zombie's been looking really good. And uh, I've been I've been getting better while I've been here, too. So it's like it's a win-win, you know what I mean? Like. I'm getting paid to be here. I'm getting better. I'm training with, you know, the future featherweight champion of the world. So it's been a great experience. It's been awesome. All right. So I got a bunch of questions from the Korean media and and some of the some of the fans in Korea, UFC fans, MMA fans. You know, they know who you are and uh, they know more about you since, you know, you're in, in Korea getting, you know, getting the zombie ready for his fight against Brian Ortega. So let's uh, let's start with the first one. You know, you've been in south korea for i believe over a month now um you know how have you spent your time here besides getting uh the korean zombie ready for his upcoming fight man so yeah we've been here about two months now it'll be about two months next week um but the first two weeks so when before we left here my coach was like yeah we got to do quarantine for two weeks no big deal whatever so i was thinking like we'd all be together we'd all go to airbnb and we just like have to hang out we'd be able to like hit pads and hang out and stuff no man it wasn't like that at all like we got we as soon as we landed they like they like herded us into this like bus like we had to go like they shuttled us into this bus took it to this this hotel that was guarded by the military and the police and stuff and put us in, in individually in, in separate rooms and like we isolated us for like two weeks straight and so it, it, it actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise to be honest because like yeah, i was able to like sit with my thoughts and like kind of work some stuff out that i that i've kind of been running from and i didn't realize that but uh to i just being thrown into that and not knowing what i was getting myself into it was a little bit of a shock at first but uh it, like all in all that experience it turned out to be amazing and then as soon as we get out you know zombie comes pick comes and picks us up takes us out to this amazing place to eat and uh you know it was just it's been awesome since then it's been hit, hit the ground running and we just been training hard and and eating at all the best spots and just you know just living like kings man it's been awesome uh before we get into the food you know have you visited any areas around seoul you know have you done the the, the sightseeing and stuff like that um, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We went to like this, uh, this really famous, like uh, the mall, the mall area, like in VDM or something like that. I forget what it was called. Like, there's a bunch of vendors all over the place. Like everybody's just hustling. Like there's people running like merchandise here and there. It, it was pretty sweet. Um, and here in Gangnam, uh, like we're right in the, in like the, the happening district where like all the restaurants and bars are and stuff. So we've, uh, gone out and got, done some karaoke, um, had had a good time with like Jay Park and 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 Woogie Park and yeah, just been just having fun, just you know, getting out on the town, seeing some stuff. But um, yeah, we were supposed to go on a mount like on on a hike, but it ended up raining that day and we, we weren't able to go. So hopefully we'll get to do that too. All right, now with uh, Korean food, does that does that suit you? Oh, dude, the food has been amazing, man. It's been so, it's like the best food I've ever had. No matter everywhere I've gone, it's like, you know, it's it's five-star dining, you know. And a lot of that, too, where, where Zombie's taking us to eat. Like, he's taking us to all the best spots, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I, I haven't had anything here that I don't like. Oh, really? So, you know, do you eat the Korean food often? Do you eat rice and all that mm -hmm. every day? No, no, not really. Like this, this is the first time I have like real authentic Korean food. You know what I mean? Ever like anything, barbecue, uh, the chicken, like you know the seafood, like every anything like the Korean style. Like this is the first time I've ever experienced it. Um, All right. So, is, so you have you ever have you ever ran into any food that that did not agree with your palate? Mm, no, I'm pretty open to to most every food though. Like no matter where I go in the world, like I always try myself like or tell myself like just try it. You know what I mean? Just try it. And there's nothing that I had where I was like, 
I've had it and I didn't actually there was one in Japan. So there's this uh it was like a green egg. So what it was, it was like a partially developed chicken and an egg and then they cracked the egg and then let it like ferment. And then I like I had a slice of that on a sushi roll and that was foul. That tasted like death. That so that's like the only thing I think I've had in my life where I was like, I'll never eat that again. So no, so nothing like that in Korea. I had live octopus the other day. Had live crawfish and stuff. So that was a new experience, and that was good though. I enjoyed it. Tastes yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. Now, um, is there any Korean culture that you know that you felt like was very unique? You know, compared to like what you're normally used to. Man, just the like the love and the hospitality and the way they take it, like the way Zombie and his wife are just like take care of us. Like that's. That's something that's like, it's so rare, not just like in the United States, but in the world today, you know what I mean? Like, and it's so cool. Like, and just to see how he like takes care of um, his team, you know what I mean? Like he, he's kind of like the big brother, so to say, you know, and everybody, you know, he's just got the most respect, you know, cause it, and it's not because he demands the respect. It's because he gets the respect is how he treats everybody, you know? And that's just, that's amazing to be, to be around just such amazing people like that. You know, that's just, you just can't go wrong. Has it been awkward, you know, going everywhere and everybody bowing to you all the time? No, no, not really. No, I think it's, I love it. I love, the, I love the, the Asian culture. You know what I mean? Like Japan, I've been over to Japan enough times. Like it's not really anything. that's like a, a shock to me, but um, it's kind of nice. Like it's, it's cool that everybody's like, you know, oh, they respect you instead of being like, you know, in America, like get out of the way. Dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> giving you snarly looks and stuff so yeah it's awesome it's it's refreshing you know the human humankind are being kind <laughs> <laughs> have you learned have you learned any uh career phrases could you drop some uh some phrases on us you want to say oh um um i got i got a good one keju <laughs> manaseki <laughs> Oh, I got I got Shiba. Um, I got some good. I got some other good ones. I I have to think. I got a new notebook where I wrote some words down. But okay, so so the so the essentials. The essential. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. The essentials. All right, all right. Now, uh, now I want to move on to some uh, questions about uh, you know, training camp with uh, with the Korean zombie. So the first thing is um, take us through the process of you know, putting yourself in that position of being part of Korean Zombies training camp, you know, like, how did you end up there? What was the, the connection? Oh, so the connection was my former striking coach, Eddie Cha, which is Zombies head coach for this camp. He's his striking coach. Um, and they were looking for a longer, taller striker. Um, and Eddie would just so happen to be in Las Vegas the week prior. Um, he had some, he had some guys fighting in the UFC, and um we went out like we caught up went out to lunch and stuff and and then like the next week he 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 messaged me he's like hey man like this is kind of short notice but can you go to korea in in two weeks and help zombie get ready for a fight uh he's like you know you, you'll get paid like we'll take care of you i'm like yeah you know what i mean because i don't have a fight till you know who knows when so it's like income is like income coming in it's kind of a big deal so i i jumped on the opportunity you know what i mean like go train with you know, in Korea, get paid and like, you know, like I'm only going to get better. And, um, and so like the, they gave me the opportunity and I, and I, and I seized it, you know, and I'm, I'm really, really glad I did. You know what I mean? Cause I've grown a lot on this trip, like being away and, and being in this, in, in this culture, in this environment. Um, and also like as a fighter as well, you know, training with zombie and, and, you know, picking up kind of the stuff he does. And he's, he's, a, he's the real deal, man. He's a special talent for sure. And, uh, you know, how can, how can you not get better when you're training with a guy like that every single day? Was there any concerns with, of course, COVID going around and, uh, and spreading around the world and Korea was pretty hit pretty hard for, for a minute there. Uh, did you have any concerns? Was your family telling you like, Oh, maybe you should, you know, reconsider. Um, yeah, my parents were kind of like that. My my mom and my dad were like, I don't know, like going to a foreign country during during a pandemic, like you know, what, I mean? what if something happens and you know you're so far away from home. But you know, I was like, 
you got to take risks in this life, you know, you got to, you got to do what you got to do. You know, I have two little boys that I got to worry about and take care of. So, uh, as, as much as it, as, as much as it's <clears throat> a concern to, for my health and the safety, it's like, it's really not about me. You know what I mean? It's about me taking care of them. So mm. I got to do what I got to do. No doubt. Now, when was the first time you met the zombie? Uh, the first time I met the zombie, he was training. It was at the MMA lab. Mm -hmm. I think it was like 2017, 2016, something like that. Um, he had, he had been there for a fight camp. I forget who he was fighting at that point. Um, but I, I had met him. I had some interactions with him then and, uh, didn't really do a whole lot of training with him though. Like kind of just like, you know, messed around the, like we call it outside rounds. So you have cage rounds at like when you're in a fight camp, like you, you spar in the cage and that's a little more intense and that's a little more like fight pace and stuff. Or you do outside rounds, which is like just out in the training room and you just kind of like work on stuff. You're not trying to, you're not trying to win the round necessarily. You're just kind of trying to work on your tools and stuff. So I, I worked with him a little bit doing outside rounds, um, but nothing like, nothing like what we're doing now. Nothing like full, full, <laughs> full speed, full pace, fight pace kind of stuff. So it's been, it's been cool, man. He's been such a good dude. I didn't really, you know, he didn't really speak too much English, so I didn't really get too close with him when he when he came to Arizona. But um, definitely gotten a lot closer now. I have a lot of respect for the guy. What is your uh, weekly schedule like for for this training camp? Like, how do you split the time? Uh, so we train. What is it? I think it's like eleven o'clock Mondays and Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then we do six six o'clock. At night, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Wednesday, Sunday's our rest day. And then Wednesday's like he's he takes us to um, the hospital, like and we get like massage and chiropractor, like every on our on our off days. So he's like, I'm gonna beat you out, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure your body's gonna be <laughs> good awesome. to go for next week. So yeah, so it, training's been good, man. This 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 schedule that they do, um, it's it's unique to anything I've ever I've ever trained. Um, cause normally it's like you get up, you go to, you go to like a team class and then you go to team practice, but here it's like, it's specialized. It's like, mm -hmm. we'll go like, uh, simulation sparring rounds and any mistakes that he had in those rounds, we'll spend the next two days drilling, just mm -hmm. drilling and correcting those mistakes. And then, the, and then the next day we spar again. And then any, any mistakes that we saw there, we'll spend the next two days drilling and getting better on well. So like watching his progression, like this camp has just been like staggering like i've seen like i've never seen anybody uh be able to like correct issues you're not, not i would say issues but be able to cor correct like mistakes in your in your sparring like mm -hmm. almost instantaneous the way the way that this training camp is going you know what i mean so it's pretty cool to see i think i'm probably going to try to implement this this camp style for my next fight wow anything surprising about the zombie you mentioned a bunch of things earlier but anything else <sighs> surprising uh his power his <laughs> he's he freaking hits hard man and he's only if you know he's a featherweight i'm a weight class bigger than him you know what i mean and so and he hits he hits like the hardest hitting guys in my division so i couldn't imagine being a featherweight and getting smoked with a four ounce glove with <laughs> like because it, it is shocking like the first time he hits you you're like whoa like wow <laughs> God, where's this power coming from dude <laughs> But then, and then it's funny because you watch him from the outside and you watch his stance and you watch his footwork and the way he plants. And it's like, he's not hitting you with his body. The way he plants and sits into his punches, he's literally hitting you with the planet. Wow. And it's like, like he's just got really good balance and timing and footwork. And that's, that's kind of surprising, especially when you're going with them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the best man, you're in there. You've been in there for two months, basically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's the oh. thing too. Like I sparred with all the like some, some of the most mm. the, the best fighters in the world. You know what I mean? Some of the best guys in the world. And to say that like Zombie is is a special talent is like um you know that's saying something because like I said I've gone with with some of the best guys in the world. So uh, I have no doubt this he's gonna destroy Ortega and you know go on to win this title. What do you think is the the difference maker? between the zombie and, and Ortega besides, I guess, the, the power? Tactics and gameness. Gameness. Like, 
you know, Ortega's good. Ortega's a great fighter. Like, yeah, you know, I there's you can't take anything away from him there. But Zombie is like trying. He's trying to finish the fight. He's trying to knock you out. He's not gonna go out there and he's gonna try to like slow the fight down and then maybe maybe snatch your neck. Like he's gonna go out there and he's gonna punch a hole in your face and he's gonna come forward the whole time. He's gonna try to finish you. He's not gonna try to, you know, sit back and win around here. You know what I mean? He's he's gonna he's tenacious and um, it's hard to fight guys like that. Guys who put on pressure like that and guys that are in your face, especially guys who do that and they hit as hard as Zombie like. Man, it's just it's just a matter of time for one sneaks through and and that's it. You know what I mean? Um, I've talked to a lot of guys that fought Ortega too, and they said like he just doesn't really have the pop on his punches. But everybody can knock anybody. I mean, anybody can knock anybody out, but like real punchers, like you get hit by a guy and you're like, oh, oh I don't want that happening again. And then you get hit by a guy who can really punch, and you're like, fuck, I cannot let that happen again. I cannot let him hit me again. You know I mean, and zombies definitely the latter. So. Um, yeah, I think it comes down to tactics and just and balls, really. You know what I mean, like zombie's gonna get out there and he's gonna he's gonna hurt you. So <laughs> I think that's it. Could you could you compare him to anyone in the past that you've trained with? Mm, no, no, he's no, he's he's unique all on his own for sure. Um, yeah, I've never trained with anybody like zombie, and which is awesome too because you know I'm I'm a pretty I'm a student of the game, you know what I mean? And I learn pretty fast. So being able to work work with Zombie has, has been a breath of fresh air um, in my training as well. So I've definitely picked up some some good things to take to take away from this camp. All right, now moving on to uh, the the news in in the MMA world, uh, <laughs> like uh, at UFC stuff. You know, let's uh, let's get into the um, the biggest fight probably in lightweight history is uh, Khabib versus Gaethje. You know, who are you expecting to win this fight and, and how do you expect this fight to play out? You know, my heart, my heart wants Gaethje to win. You know, I like, I, I like, I love Gaethje. He's kind of, he kind of got into the, to the UFC and like, like he's not, he hasn't had an easy road. You know what I mean? I feel like everybody was kind of like doubting him. Like, oh yeah, we'll just give him the tough guys and then he'll fizzle out. And here he is getting ready to fight for the world title. And, um, you know, I, I, you can't take anything away from Khabib either because, He's a freaking monster. And, you know what I mean? My logic says Khabib is probably going to win the fight, but my heart says Justin. So I'm kind of torn, man. Um, I want Justin to win. I think more likely Khabib's going to win. Do you think Justin, if he does win, it'll be by knockout? I, I don't. It could either be by knockout I mean, I could go any way. I think he could submit him too. I think mm -hmm. honestly, he could he could sink a guillotine choke. Like, <clears throat> and I think he could also win a decision. You know what I mean? Like, I think I think if he can if if he can stuff the takedowns and he can get back to his feet, I think that's a bad fight. Mm -hmm. And I think I know Khabib is tough, and I know Khabib will, will hang with him. You know what I mean? So if Justin doesn't doesn't catch him and put him out, then it's just going to be a war. I think so. <laughs> I think I think everybody's going to win on that one. All the fans are winning that fight. Definitely. Um, the newest uh, addition to the UFC lightweight division is Michael Chandler. Considering everything, you know, I mean, his age, his experience, his, uh, you know, even like, I guess his overall record of like the, 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 the opponents that he has faced. How far do you believe he can go in the UFC? Um, you know, honestly, like, I think he, I think he can make a run at it. Um, you know, Chandler was a former teammate of mine. I trained with him for like four years, three years at the MMA or at the Alliance MMA and uh, one year at Power MMA. And uh, he's definitely a world class fighter for sure. You know what I mean? Like um, he's definitely right there in the top top mix of the of the division. Um, it just all it all comes down to like st styles make fights, you know, whoever he gets matched up against. Um, I know he can fight with, he can compete with, but it just comes down to style. Which is, but I will say one thing. I think it is kind of, kind of messed up that he, he gets signed and he comes in and he's already he's the replacement for the title. Like that's, like there are so many guys above him that deserve better. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Oliveira, you know, Poirier, even. You know what I mean? Like Ferguson, even. Like all these guys. It's just like. That was kind of a slap in the face. I'd be asking for Chandler. Like, if Chandler doesn't get this fight, I'd be like, yo, Dana, 
sign it up, dude. <laughs> like, see what you almost did. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to beat this guy. So, yeah. But I wish him the luck. I wish him the best of luck. I, I hope he has a a successful run in the UFC and um, he t- retires there if that's what he wants. Now, is is do you see yourself eventually returning to the UFC? You know, I've I've definitely thought it's definitely crossed my mind. It's um, but right now, like I'm not I'm not concerned with that. Like what I'm concerned with is making as much money in a short amount of time. And to me, the the PFL is the is the best way to do that. You know, because they're they're already paying me per, like more than my UFC contract was per fight. But then there's the chance, the incentive of winning that million dollars, and you know that's life changing you know it would take me you know five six seven wins in the ufc before i'm fighting pay-per-views and making those you know that kind of money so for me it's about money right now but i would definitely be open to uh you know going back to the ufc it just comes down to money you know how different of a fighter do you believe you are since leaving the ufc Man, I've I'm night and day. Like the Johnny Case that that is here today would utterly destroy the Johnny Case that you know. I, I was young when I got in the UFC. You know what I mean? I was I was kind of in the wrong mindset. I wasn't really. I wasn't fighting. Wasn't my everything. You know, fighting was just something I was good at. I enjoyed doing, but I was kind of a wild kid still. You know, I was kind of not not dialed in, not focused, and not on my own grind. So, so yeah. So that's that. Um, but I, I know for a fact that uh, that uh, I got to. Uh, I've gotten a lot better just since being cut from the UFC. All right. Now some some personal questions that I believe the fans want to know. Um, why is your nickname Hollywood? <laughs> so I got the nickname Hollywood because when I first started fighting, I uh, I used to have like really long, like blonde hair and I kind of looked like a surfer kid. <laughs> and uh, my first two fights were like 30 second, like knockout highlight reel fights. And uh, so after my second, <laughs> my second fight, I, I came to like the fighters meeting for my third fight and the promoter's like, Oh, here comes Hollywood waiting on Hollywood. And everybody's like, Oh no, like that's it. So I got it because I got like my my surfer boy looks and also my uh, my like highlight reel finishes. I did not know that, man. I've never asked you that in the past. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty unique one for sure. It was one of those ones like someone says it and you're like, yes, that's the one. So, you know, I hate guys that like make up their own nicknames, you know, like the Pitbull or like the Destroyer. It's like now a nickname is something given to you. It's not something that you should do for yourself. Definitely. Um, you've been training in Las Vegas for a while now, and uh, and they're wondering, like, why did you move teams, you know, and, and how good is the training in Las Vegas compared to the rest of the world? Ah, oh, man. So, a stream couture is awesome, and I've made the most the most improvements in my career being there and training there. Um, the coaches are awesome, but also, like, the environment because, you know, it's in Las Vegas where all the fighters come to all around the world. And, you know, so you have your your group of core guys that are there every day, but then you get weekly, you get guys from Russia, guys from Brazil, guys from all over the world that come in and mix it up with you, you know, and if you're, if you're a student of the game and you can learn quick, like you, you pick up a lot training with those guys. Um, So it's definitely, it's definitely been a good, a good, a good change for me. Um, Why I moved there though, because I had recently got cut from the UFC I had no no job opportunity or you know no places to fight, and I recently just started dating uh, Emily Whitmire, who had trained uh, Shrink Couture and lived in Las Vegas, and there was it made more sense for me to move to Las Vegas than it did for her to move to Arizona, and um, I'm glad I made the move because you know like I said it, it's made me such a better more complete fighter. So. All right, now you're currently signed to the PFL. Can you reveal anything about the 2021 season coming up? I don't know anything. I've been asking questions too. I've been asking Ray, you know, are we going to be able to get at least one fight this year? You know, I know the tournament's kind of out of the question, but you know, we got, we got families, you know, we got, we need, we need something coming in. And uh, he just says, I don't know, man, I don't know. Um, But the 2020 uh, season was supposed to start in May. That was like the first or April or May was like the first round of the open season. Um, 
And so if we're going off that format, then I guess that I'll have to wait till April or May 2021, which, man, it sucks to think about, you know what I mean? Especially after the year I had and I was getting getting so much momentum and getting better. And then now I, I got to sit out for a year. It's kind of it's kind of disheartening, to say the least. But um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully they get something figured out and uh, we're able to at least get a fight in by the end of the year. Maybe uh, you'll have to come back to Korea and and help the zombie prepare for Volkanovski. Man, that would be I, that would be such an honor for sure. I don't think he would use me though because I'm a, I'm like two foot two and a half feet taller than Volkanovski. <laughs> but, but that would be I would come I would come help him anytime anytime he ever needed it, man, for sure. Are you he's are you good, accompanying man, him? So. Are you accompanying him to uh to Fight Island? So we leave next Wednesday. Me and Bobby Moffat, um, mm-hmm. the other the other fighter that they brought out here to help. So we leave Wednesday, and then they leave Friday. It'd be like his coach, Eddie, um, Zombie, Zombie's wife, and then another one of uh, Zombie's um, teammates here that are gonna go. So I think they only get three. So I'm pretty sure, man, your family is missing you right now. You're probably really eager to get back home. Definitely, man. Yeah, I got two little boys at home waiting for me, and I can't wait to get back and, and enjoy enjoy some time with them. You know, luckily I've been, I you know, having this time off, I've never been able to be back home in Iowa for more than you know a month at a time, and that was like the most. So I was able to spend all summer, like since May, I was back home and spending time with them, and we had an amazing summer, and it was really good. It was really good to be back and to have those memories and. Uh, you know, it was kind of hard. It was really bittersweet to, to come here and train. You know, um, I had to miss my youngest's ber- uh, eighth birthday to be here. You know, so that was really tough. But, you know, they understand. Like, you know, this is what daddy does, and I got to put food on the table. So, we're definitely gonna celebrate when I get back. That sounds good, man. The Korean people, they love the 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 what is it? The family aspect of of <laughs> anything like fighting, sports, whatever nothing better man there's nothing more important than your family yeah you know i mean like that at the end of the day like, that's what it all boils down to all right now because you came to korea to help the korean zombie a lot of korean fans they got to know you a lot better you know what i mean from from interviews and videos and stuff that's circulating what do you have to say to the korean fans give a message to them man thank you guys so much for all your, your love and hospitality you know it's been it's been really, it's been really nice being here and being able to help such a stud like Zombie, and uh, not only like being here and helping, but like having the support from from the fans. It's just been, it's been awesome. So I really appreciate it, and I just want to say thank you for your hospitality, and um, I hope you guys follow my journey, and I hope I can uh, continue to put on entertaining fights, and uh, uh, you know, keep y'all interested and entertained in my career. <laughs> All right, one last thing, man. There's a a big like group for like MMA fans, UFC fans, and uh, they wanted to they wanted you to say something in Korean directed to them. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna say it, and you just have to repeat after me, and they're gonna you know they they're okay. gonna uh, they're gonna receive the message. Uh, so okay. basically, in English, what you're saying is like, love you guys, Ungyo. Ungyo is like the name of the group, I I guess. So in Korean, Ungyo. it's 사랑해요. 사랑해요. Ungyo. Ungyo. Yeah, so 사랑해요, Ungyo. 사랑해요, Ungyo. 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 Yeah, perfect. That's perfect. 사랑해요, Ungyo. 사랑해요, Ungyo. All right, there you go, man. That's the best. <laughs> hey. You know, language is uh, it's hard, man. It's hard to do. But uh, yeah, man, I really appreciate the time, man. The, the Korean media... They they have all the respect in the world for you, the the Korean fans also, and uh, I just love being the conduit, you know what I mean, to uh, kind of connect them together with you, Johnny. And uh, we've been speaking for for many years now, and 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 I'm you know I'm honored to be part of the journey too, man, of just being able to speak with you, man, a high level athlete. It's incredible every single time. Likewise, man. I always enjoy talking to you as well. You're always a good dude, and it's always good to see you again. So I appreciate your time.